Good morning, 302. We are going to read a new book for our 302 book club. And Isla, what's the name of this book? Sue Found Sue. It's my favorite book. It is. It's when Sue Hendrickson discovers her T-Rex, Sue the T-Rex, who's at the Chicago Field Museum. Um, so the, it, the Chicago Field Museum is filled with lots of different dinosaurs mm -hmm. who died a long time ago. You're right. We've been there. Um, this was written by Tony Buz Buzio. What the, what happened to them? Yep, hold on. And it was Sometimes. illustrated by Diana um, so Diana Saduka. Why don't we read the book first, and that will tell us a lot, and then we'll add at the end, okay? And so, then can I tell them about the dinosaurs? Fantastic, I would love that. So when Sue found Sue, we actually we met the author and the illustrator at the Field Museum, didn't we? Yeah, her name is Sue. She... Well, yeah, she read it. We met she Tony and Diana. See, and like Tony yeah. even signed our book for us when we we brought our book, and she signed our book. And uh, and we saw Sue the and we saw Sue and we saw Sue the Sue, dinosaur. Sue Hendrickson. I was about to say we saw Sue Hendrickson at the museum too, didn't we? I don't think so. I haven't met Sue Hendrickson before. But let's read about yes, Sue. Yes, I she Do you read this book. remember? Okay. Oh, yeah. That was the author, Tony, who read it. Okay. So Sue Hendrickson was born to find things. Missing trinkets, prehistoric butterflies, sunken ships, and even buried dinosaurs. I put that, that's a great picture right there. No, I cannot see. I know. I'm going to bring it back. If it was lost, Sue's curiosity led her on a hunt to find it. Sue began searching for lost treasures when she was a mighty sm when she was mighty small. She was born shy and incredibly smart. Treasure hunting was the perfect job for a shy girl. When she was young, she would walk alone through the alley behind her home in Munster, Indiana, with her head down. She was on a mission to find things, and often she did. Mama, what is it? Listen, often she did, like a little brass perfume bottle that she's never lost. That's the brass perfume bottle. Sue wasn't like other kids, so shy and smart. She gobbled up books the way that kids gobbled up ginger snaps. Head down. A book a day, Sue learned things all on her own. She dialed up her curiosity up to high and discovered everything about anything that interests her. Sue's curiosity led her to visit the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. She loved to view the endless supply of treasures that other hunters, what did he say? I'll read it in a sec. Other hunters, um, maybe shy outsiders themselves, had already found. She couldn't wait to grow up and search the wide world of hidden treasures on her own. So this says Triceratops, and that says a Hadrosaurus. So different types of dinosaurs so that can are. Do it too. Should I? Should I tell you what? What dinosaurs are about? You do? Oh. Yeah, hold on. Let's so, finish. So, dinosaurs were fell south a long time ago. They and, did. And, they, and then something began to get them to die. Yeah. And then the skin peeled off. And, that, and, and then, that's why we've got their fossiled bones, don't we? And then they were the only one. Yep. Okay, let's keep reading, and then we can talk more about dinosaurs at the okay. end. Okay. At the age of 17, Sue landed her, launched her life of discovery, traveling, living outdoors, supporting herself, and finding things. One curiosity always, always led to another, and for the first time, Sue joined teams, teams of curious, dedicated treasure Mama, hunters. What's this net for? It's if they find any treasure, they could put it in the net. Or if they were, if they do, if they find any special fish, they could put them in the net and take them up. Diving first for tropical fish, 
then for lost boats, lost airplanes, even lost cars. Eventually, Sue eventually led Sue to search Dominican amber mines for prehistoric, for extinct prehistoric butterflies, to search the de deserts of Peru for prehistoric whale fossils, and finally, finally, to search the hills of, Western, see my face. of Western South Dakota for dinosaur fossils. So here, let's show some, it's a beautiful illustration. Diana drew. Okay, for a long, for a, for four long, hot, dusty summers, Sue dug for duck-billed dino fossils, taking down the big rocks with a shovel and a pick, then freeing bones, first with a rock hammer, then with a digging knife, and and with an exacto knife and a tiny pick, finally dusting the area with a paintbrush to remove all trace of rock from the bone. No showers for washing, no beds for sleeping, no escape from the beating sun, but still Sue was part of a team. She loved the work, the discovery, and the chance to be curious and find things. We found Sue. During the last weeks of her fourth summer of digging for duck bills, in the blistering heat, Sue Hendrickson felt pulled to a sandstone cliff in uh, to a sandstone cliff far off in the distance. She couldn't say why then, and she can't say why even now, but she was called to the cliff on August 12, 1990. When her team headed into town to fix a flat tire, Sue finally followed her curiosity. She and her golden retriever, Gypsy, left camp alone in that morning in a dense, misty fog. Um, did, did her crew leave her behind? Yeah, they went to town to fix a tire, and so she went for a bit of a wander, for a walkabout. And why are they leaving her? Um, they didn't need her to come with. They just needed only a few people to go. So she and Gypsy, Gypsy, they hiked for hours across seven miles Why of rugged... Why did they leave her? I don't know. Let's listen. Across seven miles of rugged prairie land before they finally reached the rock face Sue had been so curious about. Sue and Gypsy stood below a 60-foot-high towering cliff of tan and gray rock. This is a quote. I walked around the base of the cliff with my head down watching the ground. About halfway along, I noticed a few pieces that looked like bones. Then I looked up. Sue stared up at three enormous backbones protruding from the cliff. Eight feet above her, she felt a thrill run through her. Could it be? It was hard to believe, but Sue knew by their incredible size what those fossils must be. A Tyrannosaurus rex. This is a quote. I could see them quite clearly in the sunlight, as though waiting patiently for someone to find them, unquote. Once again, Sue Hendrickson did what a shy outsider girl had trained herself to do so well. She found them. Sue rushed back to the campsite, humming with excitement. The excitement, the happiness, and the thrill of her find. She couldn't wait to tell the others, a Tyrannosaurus Rex! Her team immediately named the dinosaur Sue the T-Rex after Sue Hendrickson, the finder. Then they raced to free the T-Rex from the cliff. But releasing 300 T-Rex bones in 115 degree heat under the sweltering sun without damaging bones was neither quick nor easy. For five days, Sue and the team 
worked from sunrise to sunset, breaking rocks with picks and digging with shovels to remove nearly 30 feet of sandstone and hard soil. At last, the bones appeared, so many of them. The team mapped the location of each with drawings and photographs. Finally, with knives and brushes and smaller tools, tools Sue and the team removed, the num the and removed and numbered every bone, recording them in a notebook. Nearly three weeks later, trucks bounced over 150 miles to deliver all the bones to the Black Hills Institute. Sue the T-Rex was finally free, thanks to Sue Hendrickson, who was born to find things. After a long dispute, dispute about ownership, Sue the T-Rex went to auction. And who won the auction? None other than the Field Museum, the very same museum Sue Hendricks loved to visit so often as a young girl. What does this say? It says Sue Tyrannosaurus Rex. Walk into the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Inside, Sue the T-Rex towers over you. She is the world's largest, most complete, best preserved, Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil discovered so far. And she was found by Sue Hendrickson, the once shy girl so different from the others whose curiosity has always led her to find things and always will. Now there's some more notes in here around additional sources. And what we'll do is we'll put in the Field Museum link. But I think what you were saying, Isla, is that when we were at the Field Museum a couple weeks ago before we, um, before we started staying at home, um, we saw that Sue the T-Rex, they think either something crushed her jaw, like you said, like rocks hit it, or she got an infection. And What's so infection an infection means like um, some some owies get in your tooth and then she, because she's a T-Rex, she can't go to the dentist to get it fixed. So what they think is that um, Sue was not able to eat and Sue the T-Rex. And that's how she and, she, and her face got kind of, her um, skull got a little bit um, crushed. So you can go see Sue's skull at the exhibit, and then they have her all laid out. So let's do some more research by going on, Mama, on the Field keep, Museum. I want to keep, the, I need to tell them about the dinosaurs. Okay, you tell them, Not and then we'll say goodbye. Sue, I need to tell them about the other dinosaurs. Oh, there's loads of dinosaurs at the Field Museum, aren't there? There's Triceratops. So... What happened to Sue is she, she kind of was uh, with the other dinosaurs and they like to fight. Do dinosaurs like to fight? I think some of them do. Now we're going to say. Really? They like to fight. We're going to say goodbye to 302. We'll, we'll, we'll do another video with your commentary about dinosaurs. <laughs> Stop talking! <laughs>